Let me just get I your will. your initial reaction to this OEL deal. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. The one thing I'll say from Bill Armstrong's uh, side of things, the general manager in Arizona, he has been really intent on getting picks. I mean, he did a great job when he was with St. Louis as the AGM slash head amateur scout. And that was one thing that they did not have any of due to violations, trades, and, and otherwise in Arizona. So he's been aggressive acquiring second round picks for the future, but getting into the top 10 was absolutely huge. I feel there's a significant drop off after the 10th pick in this draft. And so he's able to target Vancouver to get that done. For Vancouver, Jim Benning, you out of score, you need that. And yeah, Larson, if he can ever find what he was and is he really ever that far from what he was, then you're adding a nice piece that can eat to 24 minutes on your back end. So really important pieces going both ways. I think both teams acquiring what they need. Vancouver needs to take that step up. They need bodies. They need parts. And Arizona is clearly uh, right at the, at the start of a rebuild here right now. So really interesting deal there, but seems like it suited both sides really well. Yeah, and I think the division plays a factor because I think it's up for grabs. Like, you go back to that Pacific division, and I yeah. think Vancouver, uh, all the Canadian teams in the Pacific division have a chance to win it, and I think a lot of GMs are looking at that. Any of the other deals or rumors right now that you've seen today floating before we get into this first round of the draft that, that interest you? Two things struck me, and the first would be the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, you have a rookie general manager, and you know there's 31 other guys out there looking to take advantage of this guy. And I thought Kevin Adams did a really good job in that deal for Rista Lyon. I mean, you acquire another first-round pick. Again, it's in that second tier, but the way I would look at it now is that he's going to target a goalie at that position, and one of them should be available for him right there, Sebastian Kosa or Jesper Volstadt. So I love that deal, and you get Hag, a defenseman there, um, you know, who's been around and just starting to come into his own. So you replace essentially the piece that you had. But what I also thought was interesting was the New York Rangers. I mean, Jeff Gordon is working with us here in NHL Network. There yeah. was a reason, you know, why he was out of, a, out of a job in New York. They addressed it with a long-term signing of Barkley Goodrow. They got a little bit bigger, a little stronger. Sammy Blay is one of those pain in the rear end guys. He's not afraid to drop the gloves. They addressed that there. And I had originally pegged them to take Tyler Boucher, who's a belligerent type player, one of those old school throwbacks, mm -hmm. probably at a reach at where they were at, uh, at 15. I don't think that's going to be the case now. So, a lot of the deals today impacting what we're going to see a couple hours from now. And and it's different now. Uh, if you draft in the first round and you get a player, it can really help your team, especially given how tight the salary cap is going to be for the next four years. Young players are going to be playing a role early in the NHL. Sammy, is, is Owen Power locked in at one? Uh, if he isn't, he should be. 6'6", yeah. uh, six, six defenseman, 215 pounds, lots of room to add more muscle and strength to that body and this guy skates unbelievably well i attended a couple of private sessions with him and rangers prospect uh, eric ciccolini brad wheeler was the guy doing the doing the skills drills and i was just amazed up close how agile this guy is for that size what cemented it for me though is what we're seeing there with canada World at yeah. the worlds i mean you know, he's plays three seconds in the first period of that 2 nothing loss to Latvia. By the end of it, he's out in all the important situations for Gerard Glant. And so that, to me, is what sold it and said, yeah, he's the clear-cut number one now. He was basically like a top-two defenseman on, a, on the gold medal team <laughs> yeah. at the World Championship. Something that's never been done before, a team that started 03. Yeah, crazy. All right, never before have three guys been drafted from the same NCAA school in the first round of the NHL draft. Could we see three from Michigan in the top 10, Sammy? I believe that's going to be the case. I mean, power, cement, where he is. Beneers, if he doesn't go two, he's going three. Johnson might slip a little bit. He's slight of frame, but everybody loves his skill and the dynamic ability that he brings to the table. And you know what's crazy, Tim? Mm -hmm. You look at their recruiting class. Brisson and Bordalo last year, absolute studs. Brisson was a first-rounder. Luke Hughes is going there. Mackie Samuskevich is going there. Dylan Duke is going there. Samus Gavich and Duke, probably not first rounders, but obviously Luke Hughes is. Mel Pearson's going to have a rock star team there in Ann Arbor. Sammy, quickly, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but do you think uh, name and likeness could change what some kids do uh, when it comes to choosing junior hockey or NCAA hockey? The ability to make some money maybe at those power hockey schools? Yeah, I think it, it it can definitely change the landscape. And it's been too long for the NCAA, who's been stuck in the mud for years. They're forced to do it. So it, it may change the landscape. And I think the, the CHL here, while they've been on somewhat pause, uh, need to try and maybe 
figure it out and try and find a way to see if they can't help their players in a, in a different fashion to, to get on an equal playing field. All right, unless he went somewhere else, the OHL kids didn't play at all. How much did that hurt them versus the rest of the leagues in the CHL and the NCAA kids? And because of this, Sammy, might we see a draft where we look back and go, how did this guy drop to the third round? Yeah, I think we're going to see that. Now, yeah. uh, you know, some of the top end guys from Ontario, the the Offmans, yeah, the right. McTavishes, the Pinellis, they were able to get over and play in Europe and at least play some number of games. So there was recent tape on those guys. But a Wyatt Johnston didn't play. He had a seven game audition at the under 18s. He was brilliant in that role and might have pushed him into the first round here. I have him going at the end of the first round. But there are a lot of other guys that might have played tier two, weren't quite ready at 16, have grown over a year and a half. I know scouts were scrambling to get to a lot of these private skates around the the, G, the the greater Toronto area just to try and see what happened. Josh Bloom is a name that comes up immediately. Chandler Romeo is another name that comes up immediately. It's guys that a lot of people didn't have really good viewings on, and now they're seeing, oh, my gosh, these guys might be steals here. So Ontario is going to be a key, key battleground later in the draft when people are looking for those steals. All right, give me one or two names, Sammy. I know that you always circle them. You don't want to put them on your draft rankings too high because all the other people will go, how did he put them that high? But that you have circled either that they'll be a steal or they might move up the board because there's a GM that just likes them that much. Really interesting guy is is uh, Josh Stone, the son of Shane Doan. His first year had 14 points playing in Chicago. They, Because he was so slight of frame, they had to manage his time. We thought he was like Kawhi Leonard with the Chicago Steel on the USHL. He comes back this year, and this guy was absolutely lights out. But he also plays with a little bit of that grit and determination. He plays the game very much the same way his dad did. He's all over the ice. He's a pain in the rear end. He's giving you that max work ethic and had a fantastic year playing on Chicago's top line, which was difficult because they had a great team. The other guy is Ben Goudreau. He was the goaltender who played with Canada at the under-18s. His numbers weren't particularly good in Sarnia, they weren't particularly good at the under-17s, but in six games at the World Under-18s, he was named the top goalie of the tournament for good reason and an awesome interview with a great young man. So I have high hopes for him as well. Sammy, uh, love to see you getting that American shine on. Uh, love having you on the show. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. And get a good meal or two. While you're in the New York, New Jersey area, get a couple good meals in you, okay? Been there, done that, baby. <laughs> Attaboy. Attaboy. <laughs>